How do you do? I'm um, Tim from Tang. Tang's a real place, you know, and here it is. Anyways, um, I have ash dye back in an ash plantation. I have it in some older plantations too, and we're dealing with it as the best we can. The ash dieback seems to be fairly prevalent in Ireland. The minister made a statement recently saying it's present to a greater or lesser extent in all 26 counties in the southern part of the island and of course it's present to a greater or lesser extent also in the six counties to the north. Now throughout Europe and um, on the island of Ireland and on the island next door people are all cooperating together. There's a lot of cooperative science going on around Ash Dieback and there's an awful lot of information available for interested folks like me to find out how it works. And so I'll just give you a brief description of how I think, um, or at least how I understand that Ash Dieback works, what it does. There's these little tiny ascospores that are the asexual stage of the fungus and these are the agents that infect the trees. They fly through the air, they're carried on the wind, they get carried by birds and by animals and by people and by vehicles. And when one lands on a leaf, it puts out a little germ tube and penetrates the leaf cellular structure and very quickly infects the leaf stem. And the fungus will grow to an extent down the... The, the fungus will grow to an extent down, down the tree. You can see this infected stem here has, there's a lesion there on the stem. You can see I've um, marked the infected tree. Great stuff that duct tape. So what happens is this tree is not actually producing any infective material at the moment. The um, infective material gets produced in the sexual stage of the fungus which happens later on. So the infected leaves and their stems, the little petioles that hold the multiple leaflets of the ash, they fall onto the forest floor and it takes multiple ascospores to land on a leaf to actually get it infected in the first place and they, ought, they have a couple of different sexual types if you like, a bit like men and women kind of. And um, so that over winter on the forest floor, the fungus overwinters on the forest floor in the little petioles of the leaves and the following summer it proceeds to have sex and put up little fruiting bodies and release a whole new generation of ascospores into the air to infect new trees. Now this tree here is still alive. Um, it takes multiple infections to really really harm a tree and generally the ash dieback itself doesn't kill the tree. Generally the tree is killed by something else. A honey fungus or something like that after it's been very much weakened. So how can we deal with this? What can we do? Well in our own little bit of forestry here we've been um, I'm just doing formative shaping at the moment trimming the trees in nice straight little stems so they'll go up long and straight nice straight ash trees is what we want. But um, this monoculture of ash is not going to remain a monoculture for long. We're going to have to... Um, well, every infected tree is going to be removed and we're going to replace it with something else. So over the next five years, I expect, as I expect, about 98% of these trees over the next 10 years or so will succumb to the disease. They're going to get replaced with different varieties of trees over time. My reason for not um, digging the whole lot up and burying it or digging the whole lot up and burning it is that I wish to find the few resistant individuals that will exist here and propagate them. I wish to be one of the earliest folk in Ireland to have resistant ash to replant. It's probably going to take us, I don't know, 20, 40 years to just replace the existing trees. As we look around the horizon, there are so many ash trees. There are ash trees all around us. And each and every one of these ash trees is under threat from the Chilara fungus. Now there's a few things we can do. At the moment in this 
little piece of forest. I've been educating myself about the fungus very carefully and because it's late to be acting this year before next summer season when it's all going to be busily having sex and releasing its ascospores into the air, what I'm doing is I'm removing infected trees and I'm spreading straw. You can see some straw there in the trailer. I'm spreading straw on the forest floor and um, using the straw to sterilize the ground by burning it. However, there's a much more practical and simpler way to deal with the fungus having sex on the forest floor. No sex for the fungus. That's my plan. No sex for fungus. So how do you prevent the fungus having sex on the forest floor over the winter and in the summertime? Well, one of the simplest things you can do is use urea, which is a common fertilizer. If you spray a bit of urea on the fallen leaves around the base of your ash trees, farmers all over the country can do this. They all have access to urea. They all have a knapsack sprayer and they can all spray a little bit. Well, the urea is just that little bit of extra nitrogen and it makes a huge difference to the speed at which the petioles of the leaves decompose on the forest floor. And so, if you spray a bit of urea under your ash trees, the petioles will nearly all decompose before the fungus gets to have sex and there won't be that cloud of ascospores released into the air for the next year. So that's a really good way to operate. It's a difficult situation. God help the hurlers. Already, um, well for the last, I suppose for the last long time, hurley ash has been a scarce commodity. We've, having, we've been having to import hurley ash from Europe and um, I'm afraid all the European ash has kind of had it. The Chilara fungus is all over Europe and has pretty much decimated the place. And so Irish hurley ash is the last resort and of course the Irish ash are under threat too. We all need to work hard. Coming back to what we can do to help the trees, you might see in the hedgerow there are a large number of ash trees and I'll just zoom in on some of them and go over there. Now you can see those ash trees are carrying a heavy load of ivy. Now the trees reaction the trees reaction to um, the dieback of course is it puts out Let's imagine that this shoot had died back and it was a big tree. Well, what it does, it's died back to here, we'll say. Well, then from this little bud and this little bud and this little bud and this little bud, the tree will put out loads of little tiny epicormic shoots to produce new green matter so it can carry on living. It's kind of lost its, it's lost its tips of its green leaves, but it can still survive. The ones that are covered with ivy, well, as soon as it dies back to the ivy, the trees are doomed. So in order to save our hedgerow trees or to help them survive and withstand the rigours of this disease, it would be a great idea to remove the ivy from a large number of our hedgerow trees and I would encourage folk all over the place to do this if they can. So um, that's kind of me done for the moment. I might just walk over to, um, it's a bit far, I'll do that in another video. In another video I'll show you um, the results of our sanitation, what happens and what we've done here in this field. But for now, for now I think I'll sign off and that's me done. I'll talk to you again soon.